Hey everybody, this is Tall Gamer Junkie. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the major inconsistencies in Life is Strange Before the Storm. Now this covers the whole game, so you know, episode 1, 2, 3, the final episode. Basically, it covers all the inconsistencies that there is, and if there's any I missed, please let me know in the comments below. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. Now let's get started. The first major inconsistency we're going to be covering in this video is David and Joyce's relationship. In Before the Storm, David and Joyce are currently unmarried and they had started dating not long before the game starts. So, you know, um, we're introduced to David in episode 1. This is when Chloe needs to get to Blackwell and you have to help David fix up his car in the beginning. Don't know if any of you remember that, but I'm pretty sure if any of you played Life is Strange Before the Storm, of course you would remember that. So, David is about to move into the Pricefield house, which is seen happening in episode 3. But in Life is Strange, when Max uses the photograph and you can see the timeline change, there's a montage that shows David and Joyce were already married before Chloe's 16th birthday. Yet, in Before the Storm, Chloe is 16 and David hasn't moved in yet. So, right there, there's an inconsistency you can jot down. And by jot down, I mean make a little mental note. Because at the end of episode 3, you can see David proposing to Joyce yet they should already be married at this point. The second inconsistency here is Chloe's blue hair. In episode 3 of Before the Storm, we see Chloe dyeing her hair blue for the very first time. But we know in Life is Strange that Chloe had been dyeing her hair with a blue, st with a blue streak, or her- no, it's blue, it's blue, I'm sorry I'm colorblind. Um, we, we see that in a photo when you know, Max uses the photograph and the timelines change. You can see that Chloe has the blue streak in her hair, and this is um, in a photo for her 16th birthday. Now, in Life is Strange, it's made clear that Chloe had been dyeing her hair before her 16th birthday. And, you, and this is if you go through, if you read through the journals, if you read or get all the information, you know, get into the lore and history, um, you, you can find out that Before the Storm takes place a few months before, before, um, this timeline here starts, before Chloe's 16th birthday. You see, what they should have done here is had Chloe dye her, have the blue hair streak, have her dye it in episode 1, or at least show us or Chloe having that part of her hair dyed in episode 1 because that would have made a lot more sense but in episode 3 we see her have the blue hair streak so you know it's a bit it's a bit confusing you know what I mean now this next part about Chloe's hair I find pretty interesting so before episode 3 was released um, the Life is Strange Before the Storm community manager Toby Palm made a public statement to address the concerns of the community, you know, of us, the Life is Strange fans, fans regarding this major inconsistency. And he says, I don't believe that it was stated that there was, that this was the first time she had a blue streak. It's just the first time everyone got to see that streak. The streak is a massive part of Chloe and we made sure to make it fit in canonically. However, but you see there's a problem here because there's, in Life is Strange, there's dialogue between Chloe, I mean not, sorry, in Before the Storm, there's dialogue between Chloe and a few other characters and you can also see in her diary that supports, well, I guess it really, it supports a major inconsistency, it doesn't support Life is Strange at all. It basically suggests that Chloe putting the streak in her hair was the first time she ever did that, so yeah, sorry Toby, Palm, your, your public statement contradicts canon, well contradicts what you said about the canon. Next on this list we have Max contacting Chloe. Now in Before the Storm you can find Max in Chloe's contacts 
and you can see that Max has Max and Chloe had been texting, but there isn't really that much. And you can see Max is coming up with excuses. Oh, I'm sorry, Chloe. I've just been busy with class and that. We should work on a schedule. And the dates um, that these messages have been sent um, are in November 2009, the 2nd, 13th, and the 28th. Now, um, Chloe says that Max hadn't contacted her for five years, but you see, the timeline for Life is Strange is 2013, before the storm takes place in 2010, and Max and Chloe, um, Max left Arcadia Bay and left Chloe in 2008, so really since this is 2009, the contact between them is, they haven't been in contact, ugh, sorry I'm getting tongue tied here, they hadn't been in contact for four years rather than five. Now, I guess you could say that Chloe exaggerated a bit, which is completely understandable because, because, why am I getting tongue tied here? Because as we know, Chloe is one that tends to exaggerate things in Life is Strange here and there, but, like, it... But I don't know, like, you can say this is a major inconsistency, but I'm willing to accept that it's not. I'm willing to agree that um, Chloe is willing to exaggerate from time to time. So, so yeah, I guess you can say that. So, but let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Do you think this is a major inconsistency or not? Let me know. Next on the list of major inconsistencies is Principal Wells' office. In episode 3 of Life is Strange, when Max and Chloe break into Wells' office, Chloe makes comments that she- that proves that, okay, this is the first time that she's been in this office. But in Before the Storm, we clearly see her in Principal Wells' office in episode 2. This is when she's being expelled or suspended, depending on what you do, what your choices are. You know what I mean? And the room really isn't that different, it's basically the same, there are a few little changes, but really it's nothing major. So I don't understand, like, how Chloe would forget that, but, you know, I guess we have a reasonable explanation, it's a major inconsistency. Or either that, or the pot she smoked and just fried her neurons and, and she completely forgot. I guess, like, also there's another reason, because Deck 9, when using Life is Strange, when making Life is Strange Before the Storm, they used a lot of assets from Life is Strange, so I guess you could say they couldn't be bothered in redoing Principal Wells' office, and then they just copy and pasted everything there and didn't even bother to give it major changes, you know? Which, to me, seems pretty sloppy, but then again, I've never worked on the game, so I really don't know anything about that, how that works. Next on this major inconsistency video, we have Chloe getting expelled from Blackwell. Now, in Life is Strange, um, Max can find a report card, a report card in Chloe's bedroom, which shows that she was still attending Blackwell Academy up until the end of her junior year, which was in May 2011. The month and year is clearly visible on Chloe's report card, and Max can look at look at it and comment. And I, and I quote: "This is from her. Damn, Chloe was kicked out of Blackwell two years ago. She used to be a great student when she cared." Okay, kicked out of Blackwell two years ago. The year is 2013. In Life is Strange, Chloe got expelled two years prior, which makes her exp being expelled in the year 2011. Now, you see, what's funny here is Chloe getting expelled in Before the Storm is actually optional. In episode 2, um, Ray has Chloe and Rachel in his office, and there's a little mini game that you can play, which I, I gotta say, I really did enjoy those games. I liked how they made you, okay, you have to repeat certain things back to the characters, like certain speeches or certain words, it was really enjoyable. But anyway, moving on, moving on back to the topic, um, if you choose to play the minigame and you succeed, then that means 
Chloe will be expelled and Rachel will continue to be in the play. But if you either fail or choose not to participate in the minigame, Chloe will be suspended and Rachel won't be in the play, it will go to Victoria. But Rachel will end up being in the play anyway, but you see what I'm saying. Basically, Deck 9 is giving us a non-canon option, which I find pretty funny because I guess it's not a major inconsistency. Like, it's not major if you don't do it. If you choose to just ignore that part, if you choose not to say anything and let Chloe get suspended, then it's like, oh, okay. It's it's really, I don't know, it's it's mind-boggling. My mind boggles at it. Let, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is a major inconsistency or do you think it's like a little funny inconsistency? I, I think it's funny, like, yes, it can be major, but it's not like, oh, okay, there's nothing we can do about it, it's major. No, this is actually something we can avoid in the game. Alright, enough about that, let's move on to the next one. Alright, next on this list, we're going to be talking about a very lovable dog. No, not Mushroom from Life is Strange 2, I mean Pompidou from Life is Strange Before the Storm and Life is Strange. But mostly from Life is Strange Before the Storm, I think I think Pompidou is just adorable in that. So, anyways, um, in episode 3, when you have to get, um, when you have to get Frank's keys in order to get into his RV, you can end up learning that he, Frank, used to be a part of dog fights, but one day he had a sort of revelation and freed all of the dogs and kept one from himself, kept one for himself, which is Pompidou. Okay, so how is this a plot hole? You see, before the storm in, in an email s implies that Pompidou, well it doesn't imply, it just says it, it outright says that Pompidou is a gift from Damon Merrick. And you can find an email from Damon to Frank in episode 2. And the email says, Frank, you like the dog. I thought you would. That dog is special, man. Callie's buyer wanted him and I said, fuck off. Keep your free 3k. I'm saving him for my buddy, Frank. I mean it. Everything you've done for me adds up way more than the 3k. Don't thank me. This is from me to you. Just let me breed him later. Okay, and we... So that's a major inconsist inconsistency right there. And speaking of Pompidou, we got another inconsistency involving his name. In Before the Storm, we uh, Chloe comes to learn about Pompidou about Pompidou's name in episode two. This is when she's inside Frank's RV and he's driving her to Blackwell. He needs her to get the money from, you know. The jock student that owes Damon, I forget his name, sorry about that. So the gist of it is, you meet Pompidou in episode 2 in the RV and Frank tells Chloe that his dog's name is Pompidou. Yet Chloe makes no mention of this in Life is Strange 1 and when you, in, in episode 4 when you need to get the list of, bar, of Frank's drug buyers, you know, that list in order to compare it with the text messages and figure out where where um, Nathan took Kate which was the Prescott barn he, if you mention that as Max if you mention Pompidou um, Frank freaks out and he goes the only way you know my dog's name is if you broke into my RV and then at this point he will go to attack Max and Chloe and Chloe can either shoot Frank in the leg but if Pompidou's not in the hospital, Chloe will end up shooting and killing Pompidou, and then she'll end up killing Frank, which is by accident, of course. But yeah, that's a major plot hole right there. And here we are, the last major inconsistency that I will be going over in this video. Now, if I have missed any, let me know in the comments below, because I really appreciate it, because I'm sure there's many major inconsistencies and if you would like me like to see me do a video about this on life is strange or life is strange 2 please let me know in the comments below now the last inconsistency we're going to be going over is rachel amber's home address 
In episode 3 of Life is Strange, when you're searching for the files in Principal Wells' office, you can come across Rachel Amber's file, and you can see, well, you can't fully see her address, but you can make out bits of it, which says 6 S A U N T L E Road, Arcadia Bay, Oregon. Because there's a piece of paper covering the home address, so you can't make it out, but it's obviously the G-O-N stands for Oregon. So, basically, when you see, what do you call it, um, in Before the Storm, you can find out that Rachel's home address is 2420 Blackbriars Road, Arcadia Bay, Oregon. Now, I guess you could say, oh, okay, Chloe moved addresses since Before the Storm, and yes, that's understandable, I'm, and I'm willing to accept that as, you know, oh, okay, yeah, she moved addresses, that's why it's changed, because whenever you have a student and something happens, that you need to update their file. Like, funny funny thing is, uh, when I was in year, year one and two, I lived in a street called Tapley, and when me and my dad and mum moved, we end, the street we ended up being in was Stapley, so that's pretty funny, so I'm willing to accept that, okay, she had to move, which is, okay, understandable. Now, that's the end of the video here, this is all the second part of my major inconsistencies video, um, I hope you all enjoyed it, I do have another video coming up later, and... I really do you, and I really do hope you all enjoy it, and I'm sorry for, for my words being jumbled and stuttering and that, yes, yeah, this is a pretty bad video, but I hope you all enjoyed it, and if there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments below, or anything you noticed that I didn't mention, which I guess is basically the same thing as saying something I missed. So anyways, let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments below, and add all your all the things that you know that are minor or major inconsistencies. This is Togi, I'm a junkie, signing off.